Good morning, Nubians. Hi, Dr. Senyata. Amen. Amen. Hey, How everybody. Everyone's good. I got up early to watch Lewis Hamilton lose. It's my first ever Formula One race. Uh, Cena Gaznavi on my show this week got me all amped up, introduced me to Lewis Hamilton, this Brit, uh, the only black, the first black Formula One champion, probably the best ever. Nice. And uh, he was going for his eighth championship, fourth in a row, and he lost on the last lap. And I'm, I'm like, y'all, the pull with my emotions today got me all up early to watch this damn thing, and the black what, man lost. What time was it? I was uh, eight something this morning, fifty eight okay. laps. All right. A.M. Well, yeah. In still. Yeah, he's still a winner because he got a whole lot of black people watching Formula One, and I know Dad going well. We were like, what? So it's a, it's a win. Yes, it is. How are you? I'm excellent. I'm so glad to be with my new family. You don't even know. These folks are amazing. Like, they come into the shop. They call and ask questions. They're here uh, on a Sunday, you know, getting some info. They bring their parents. Yesterday, we had a beauty bring her mom in. Do you remember the, um, the I keep teasing her that she can't cook. But the <laughs> Alexi, Alexi, Alexi brought her mom and her son yesterday. That was fabulous. Yeah. I, let me tell you how much I love us. You know, you um. ever since I was young, you know, you want to be around people of like minds. And then you feel like you're kind of like this unicorn outlier, weird person because you think differently. And, you know, and if you're like us, we're not trying to fit in. Y'all gonna have to figure it out. And we're good rolling, rolling solo. But it is so um, awesome to know that there's so many people and it's not like we think exactly alike, but that care about one another, care about the future of, of us, and that they really want to improve the condition. It just, it feels so good. And care about the same things and want to vibrate at the same rate so that we're doing this in the spaceship, right? We're, 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 we're Nubians, right? That that's what those pyramidal structures and all of those things were all about is that they're vibrational. And if you've been inside those pyramids and other temples, you actually feel it. Like you go in and if you hum or resonate, the whole room moves. It's designed for that. Like, it's that's only the top of the city. What people are like, ooh, the pyramids. Like there's an entire city there. Uh, when we talk about Nubia and Nubians, we're, we talk about people who are into high science. Um, we talk about Imhotep, the father of medicine and science. We talk about how this is all a part of what we were doing and what we need to return to to remember ourselves. You know, individual members we remember. And then we're vibrating and we're lifting each other. A rise I, I, wait, I'm grateful that you said that because I, I tell people to bring their brick because when I envisioned this space, I'm like, this is going to be a pyramid that's going to last thousands of years. And we're putting the first layer, the first foundation down. And then we have to build. And everybody who comes in has to bring their brick so that we can build this thing that'll last long after we're gone. We're not building it for right now. For you to say that, I've never stepped foot in a pyramid. I just read about them and they're still here. And because somebody had a vision for that thing and then the next person took up the vision and then the next person added to the vision and then the next, like it requires all of us, which is what I said yesterday. This is not a spectator sport. We got to be here to build. And I'm going to tell you something that I tell my staff all the time about the broken, what Ali? The broken uh, capstone. capstone. That's right. Yep, yep. They have an obelisk. Uh, when you travel in Egypt, and the person I was with, uh, Yasir Rahotep and Wayne Chandler, uh, we led this retreat in Egypt, and we had maybe like 60 people with us. And um, <clears throat> uh, yes, Yasir, who is a yogic master of, I don't know, 40 years or more, 45 years, uh, Yasir wanted to go to this broken obelisk he's like we have to travel there and it was going to take us see when you get up in the morning to go travel in egypt you have to get up at five in the morning and start your travel because it gets so hot by the middle of the day it's 120 and all the cars kind of strain you know under that so i was like i don't want to go see no broken obelisk like i 
why are we going to see something that never even finished getting excavated? And I'm going to tell you, he taught me an amazing lesson. We got there. It This obelisk, which imagine this science was taken from us for other purposes, like here in Washington, D.C., we have the Washington Monument, which is an obelisk, and the reflecting pool, which is an exact duplicate of what we were doing in France. They stole and put one up. You know, you got them all over, right? These are, these are um, if you can imagine, like how we get crystals, and a lot of times they're shaped like that, too. These are, these are scientific instruments, right? We went to see this broken obelisk, and when we got there, this thing was huge, and it had the smallest crack. I want to tell you that the crack wasn't more than like two feet across, and it was just a small crack that if you really wanted to, you you know, these masons of this level, right? And that's where masons come from. We'll get to that another time. Or Dr. Carr can hip you up on that. But these masons are so skillful. They could have repaired that and just put it up and nobody would be the wiser. They insisted on excellence at a level that even though it took them months and months and months, maybe even a year to excavate this thing, they left it right there. They never took it out of the ground because it was not perfect. And that's what I tell my staff. No broken no obelisk. Broken obelisk yeah. Yeah. What'd you say, Ali? I, I blinked when I said capstone. I was thinking about the pyramid part, but yeah, no, no broken, no broken obelisks. obelisks. None. When I tell my staff, that's not the way we operate. Mistakes happen. Things happen. And trust me, we learn from those. But if you see something is not right and you don't fix it, you are not operating in the sphere of melanated excellence. You got to fix it or leave it and start fresh. So when we talk about remembering what we're supposed to be doing, we're talking about leaving old habits. We're talking about uh, elevating together to a level of absolute excellence. And there, there's some folk here who have some stuff to deal with in their lives that are broken. And that's fine. We all do. Right. But fix it. Yeah. We just don't, have bring, to... don't bring that brokenness in here. Please. You please. Bring, I, I'll say this. Bring your broken. Because that's. But be prepared to fix it. Don't. That's just how I am. Or that's just how it is. Or that's not going to work. Bring yourself as you are. And we together. Right, Professor Hunter. We. Okay. we you, what I. Right. All right, I I guess I'm I'm uh, my, I'm a little frustrated, but I appreciate you reminding me, reminding me. Thank you. I'm frustrated every every day. I have at least a moment. Ali knows of frustration, mm -hmm. but that's just part of being a leader. You're a leader. Ali's a leader of you know our crew. It's like we have to expect more of each other, and then we have to rise to that occasion. We can no longer use those westernized excuses that oh well that's. Just you know, that's me. I do, you know, it, it, that's not you. You're operating outside of how you normally would be. And we're here to bring that together. So that's what I want to do today, uh, Professor Hunter, is give a foundation for some of this stuff that we're dealing with. Hey, let's go. Good morning. All right. So today I want to talk about the gift that is the ocean. And the ocean has these minerals and elements, everything we need in our body, but often we're landlocked. We don't go to the ocean. So in Jamaica, where um, my family's from, in the morning, you'll see everybody walking down to the ocean. A lot of people walk to the ocean, especially the older folks, because they remember. And we'll be walking down to the ocean in group, like people will be walking down the hill, morning, morning. And they just have a towel with them and their, you know, swimsuit or trunks or whatever, <clears throat> or T-shirt and shorts. Nobody's trying to be like, ooh, I'm on the beach, right? So in the morning at like between five and six, everybody goes down to the ocean who lives near an ocean and they call it visiting the doctor. You're like, where are you going? I'm going to visit the doctor. And what they mean is going to the ocean because at that time of the morning, they want those high minerals they take a dip in the ocean, you know, wash over themselves, release a lot of stuff that they need to release, get the mineralization you need all over, through your skin, which is our largest organ, right? And then go back home and start your day refreshed. It's the morning shower that you take. And then we have internal shower, 
right? Which is like coconut water. And we'll talk about that later because you got some horrible coconut waters on the market. And then you have stuff that's, you know, good. And then you even have the ones out of the fresh coconut, which are not great. We'll talk about that another time. But we take the external shower in the ocean in the morning. We visit the doctor. And then when we come home, we take the internal shower of our juices or coconut water or other things that are nutritious for us. So today we're going to talk about the ocean because it's the first one. This is the mother, right? The ocean is the mother of all things and human beings as um, Nubians. We need to understand that when we talk about the pantheon of deities, the pantheon, the, the way that the creator expresses itself, right? is that the ocean is an extremely powerful element and is the mother figure, right? So when we see like Osiris and we see Horus, which is, you know, Osir, and we see uh, Heru, we see Isis, which is Oset, and this is a perfect trinity, the holy trinity, right? Of father and son and mother, not father, son, holy ghost, okay? That... That was given us, and, and I'm sure Dr. Carr can get into that, that was given us later. What, what we have is this, this pyramid, this structure, this triangular structure that uh, stabilizes everything. So we have to have the, the, the sun, and we have to have the moon, which is lunar, which is the ocean. We have to have all the el those elements that hold us, that bond us together. And the importance of the ocean can't be understated because it has the mineralization that we need that can be found almost nowhere else, right? And this is available internally too to us. If we don't live near an ocean, this is how we get it, right? So today I want to talk about sea moss, the crowd roars, right? Because <laughs> I can't tell you the number of people that ask us about sea moss and it's, it's uh, healing elements. So we have moss here. And I put some here of our Jamaican gold, like our sea moss that our divers uh, get from Jamaica for us. And they send it in a box. And if you ever saw that box, it has a million stamps wrapped around it. It's crazy. And this stuff goes right from the ocean where they're diving into the box and to us. And the reason why I love that, look, look at the freshness of this. Do you see the salt? And this is not washed, not rinsed. And that's how I like it. We're going to talk about that, about decolonizing our expectations on food and drink and things that are healthy for us, that there is a perfection in the imperfection of that. This is by design. Okay. And so when we say, oh, it, it has salt or it had some stuff in it or have, get rid of it and then use what you need. Stop acting like a little baby and get, you know, we're so used to getting stuff at Target and getting stuff at all these places where all the nutrients have been removed. And we think that, oh, it's clean and it's sealed and it's got a hermetic seal on it. And it's got a, yeah, hermetic indeed. And we'll <laughs> talk about that in, a, <laughs> in another aspect, right? What we want is the real goods. We want stuff that has a little stone in it or a little thing and we clean it out and we just move on in our lives, right? Because if it's too washed, if it's too, um, if it's not raw like we need it, we're not going to get what we need out of it. This is the same with sugar, the same with salt, the same with um, paper, all these things that are whitened beyond belief. And the truth is that they do not occur that way in nature. And so we want it how it occurs. And you just got to do that. When, when you come into my kitchen and I go pick some stuff from the garden, I've said this before, if it has holes in the leaf in the collars, that's the one I'm eating first. That must have been delicious because my friend, the caterpillar, whoever he is, ate that first. He didn't go for the other leaves. He said, the nutrition is here. He's my guide. Okay. We have to get used to these animal guides, the, the nature guides that we need instead of uh, going to the store. Ooh, that has a hole. I don't want that one word. That's the one you want. Okay. And when we wash our stuff, we're washing the sand off. But if there's no super sand on it, I'm washing it off, but I'm not scrubbing it with soap. And I'm not, I want the B12 that's inside what it has to offer. Okay. 
you don't need to worry about those super worms and but you eating pork and you're eating other <laughs> other stuff like that you got worms and we'll we'll talk about it how to cleanse parasitic stuff and the, the professor hunter you came back in you want to say something yeah, no, just really quickly. Um, I've I've gotten a lot of sea moss from different places. Some of it is wet. Yours looks very dry. It has sand. like, how do you know if your sea moss is good? That's a great question. Like our moss, I I dried this out a bit so you could see it. Um, our this is more dry than it usually is when it arrives to us. It's a little. It's moister than this, and I like it moist like that because it came out of the ocean. Um, it that's perfect to me and when it gives off the sand i need and the salt i need i know this is this is what i want look at this this is why i dried it out for you and this is what i want to see okay i want to see some real action some realness in what i'm doing okay i want to see some stones i want to see some sticks i want to see a little piece of uh plastic sometimes because the ocean is filtering things there so sometimes you find all kinds of stuff take it out and move on don't call me about that and don't call nobody else that is producing really great product because the way you'll know something is not great is it just looks uniform like that i'm i'm suspicious when i see a tomato i was about to say tomato i'm sorry i was talking to another jamaican earlier today but when i see a tomato and it has you know bumps, lumps, or whatever. This came out of my garden, right? Is This side is what you'd see in the store. This side is what you see in real life. I like that. I want to see that. I may I may slice that little part off because he's a little bit leathery, but I like the fact that it looks like this. It looks like a heart. It's here to give me love. I love that. And so even when you see oranges, look at this orange. It's shaped like a lemon. But that's I, not an imperfection. It's not like no, the obelisk. This is actually perfection. Yes. This is perfection. The Washington Monument is not perfection. They didn't build it out of one piece of stone. They had to put it together because they still can't get the math. Every time they build a pyramid, it falls in. Even in Japan, they tried it some years ago and it fell in in the middle. They can't figure it out. And if the Japanese can figure out, you know, because <laughs> their level of engineering is high. Okay. So. We're talking about, um, and I love that you asked that question. We're talking about the realness of product. I am a stickler. Ali will tell you that when something is super fresh, that's when I'm interested in it. And I insist, I wouldn't give you anything that I wouldn't eat myself. This is my own supply. You're, you're seeing what the plug eats. Right? <laughs> so <laughs> I'm going to get high on my own supply. 